awesome guys. That was awesome. Uh, so tonight we're going to continue on our kind of like little series about growing our character. Mm. But uh, I wanted to take a moment out, so I sent out the lesson earlier to you guys today. So it's entitled, Multitasking is not from God. Oh. And I just want to take out a moment actually. So since I've been here, you know, you've got probably heard me give you about a thousand practicals. Right? Yes, indeed. Right, let's review those practicals I've actually given the church. Either that's through Bible discussions, on Sunday, or maybe even Wednesdays. Mm, come on, Sean. Uh, one was pray in the morning and pray at night. Yeah. Respond to every message within 24 hours. Always share good news. Oh. Write down a new to-do list every morning and, write one, uh, and get one thing done before 9 a.m. Uh, have memory scriptures. Do any advice given to you that same hour. Become best friends with those in the church. Baptize a leader. Confess your sins. Recognize your failures and find a biblical example of them and how you can learn from it. Pray before you make any decisions. Uh, pray big prayers. Mm. Create spiritual goals for yourself this year. So that, that's a massive list right there. Then you have to ask yourself, okay, which ones or how many of those are you actually trying to do? Mm -hmm. And then you go back, okay, which ones have you actually done? Mm -hmm. Right over the past couple weeks, we feel and get all these different things where we're like, man, I'm just trying to play catch up. Yeah. See, sometimes I can feel like that in my life where it's just one big long to-do list that I'll never complete. And I worry between, you know, wanting to call my family back in Los Angeles, making sure my wife and us are, are, are still having a great relationship, going over the ministry, our church, and the endless commitments that I have every day in different areas of my life, that it's just, a, this, I'm defined by my inability to make sure everything's okay. Mm. Sometimes we can feel that way. And it increases tenfold when I start leading the church, right? Amen. You know, I have so many other things that are on my mind. Um, but to fight this feeling, sometimes we can react in trying to do 12 things at once mm -hmm. and stretching your focus. But instead of getting things done, I can find myself being what I call in a minute leader. Mm -hmm. Meaning when somebody asks me to do something, I say, oh, uh, just in a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I promise I'll do that later. You know, I have so many things on my mind that I'm not actually in the moment. You can say this over and over and you think you'll do it, but the truth is, it, 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 it's never just a minute. You always take a lot longer to get that thing done than you regularly plan to. And I don't know about you, but the worst feeling in the world is when someone comes up to you that's under you and they ask you, hey, hey Sean, have you did it? Did you do it? And you say, no, no, not yet. Yeah. Right? It's just that feeling that you're like, dang it, yeah. I should have already done it. See, this happens, if this happens too long or too much, it can just get you kind of swept up in anxiety, worrying, and just feel like you just want to step back it from it from it all. Mm -hmm. And what people we can kind of kind of relate to is being burnt out. Yeah. It's just too much. I just, I just need to step back from it. See, the problem isn't that you have too much that you're trying to do, is that you have too much that you're trying to do at one moment. Mm -hmm. The problem is you're trying to multitask. Mm. So again, my title is Multitasking is Not From God. And we're really going to understand what I mean by that scripturally and how we can apply this practically into our lives to have a more effective life and schedule. Mm. So point number one, the myth of multi multitasking. So if you guys are using your Bible and your scriptures, you can turn to Luke chapter 10 if you want. But, see, multitasking, just recently even in society, has recently been termed a myth. Primarily because studies have shown that multitasking and the multitasking phenomenon is merely switching rapidly back and forth between uh, multiple, multiple tasks. Simply put, you can never do two things at once in your brain. You can't do two things at once. You're doing two things that you think you're doing at once, but your brain is jumping back and forth. So... You know, it, it talks about here, uh, the company, Fast Company, has talked about this, that what you're doing is you're simply jumping from task to task, and it, re it may result in a false sense of accomplishment. Human brains were not built to multitask. So how, how our, our brain was built is to focus on one thing at a time. And I know I've preached this previously, but I still think it's, it's a funny example in my life. 
probably not so much for the sister. But um, there, there was a time back in Los Angeles, I was um, just like a youth group leader kind of thing. Um, we had like a campus devotionals, and I forgot that I was preaching that night. So I showed up, and I'm like, dang, I, I totally forgot that I was supposed to write this sermon. So I'm at like, welcome. I'm like writing my, my point. Right? <laughs> so uh, this sister, she comes up to me, and she was my co-leader at the time. And um, she, I, I, right when I saw her, I knew that something was on her heart, or something was on her face. So I was like, uh, I was writing my, my lesson, but I was like, okay, hey, hey, is everything okay? And right away, she's like, no, it's not. But I see that you're, you're, you're busy, so just, just keep writing. We'll talk after. I said, no, I, I want to hear what's going on. I, I want to hear what's on your heart. And uh, she starts expressing what's going on. And then she says something that I thought was a pretty good point for my point number three. <laughs> and I was kind of paying attention, but then I started writing. <laughs> that, that's pretty good right there. And, uh, I, don't think, I don't think she noticed or anything, but she keeps continuing on. And after like two minutes, I look up and she's crying. Oh. And I have no idea what she's talking about. And she's like, thank you for listening. I said, I'm sorry to do this, but can you say that again? And she was like, Sean, you know, like that, that uh, common Sean that you hear. Um, and she forgave me and everything, but I don't think she ever forgot that. Uh, but, you know, I was trying to do two things at once, but I couldn't. And it, it ended up hurting her a bit, you know. And it, it's the same thing. Whenever we try to do two things at once, it's going to hurt in one of those things that you're trying to do. You know? The studies that have shown it, it's not really your multitasking, it's called task switching. That's, that's like the modern day term of what multitasking really is. You're never really doing two things at once, you're just switching really rapidly between it. And they say that there are three immediate negative effects that happen in our lives when we do it. One is an increase in time it takes to complete a given task. Two is a de decrease in productivity. And three, increase in stress. So when we're doing those things, that's what's happening to us. And not only in society and sociology is this, is this proven true, but God did not design us this way. In the scriptures, God did not design us to live a life this way. We're going to read here in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. It says here, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teachings. But Martha was distracted with much serving. She went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mar Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. You know, it says here in this story that Martha was troubled about many things. Mm. But Mary did what was right by focusing on the one thing and the one thing that mattered. See, productivity is not measured about how much you're trying to do at once, but on the product that comes from your actions. Mm. See, Mar Martha... She may have had, as she's running around all stressed, she may have had a good, you know, dinner party set up. Okay, that was a product of her and her efforts. While Mary, the product of her efforts, would have that she would have learned directly from the Lord herself. That sounds a lot more productive than the other one. And what was Jesus teaching here is that we were not designed to be running around. We were designed to find out what's the important thing and focus and do that. Yeah. See, the book of Proverbs is jam-packed with advice against multitasking or, in another way, a lack of focus. Mm. So, Proverbs 21, verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty only comes to poverty. Meaning, running around gets us nowhere. You don't want to hear about, you know, the ten things someone is trying to do, but you want to hear about the things that they actually did. Right? When, when you're in a job, you don't want to hear about, man, I try to do this, I try to do that, I try to do this. No, no, we want to simply, hey, what did you actually get done? Uh, don't tell me all that other stuff. Yeah. I want to know what you actually did. Come on. You know, diligence is the beginning of brilliance. Take pride in your work. And get diligent about what you're trying to do. Don't just try to do a lot of things. Get, 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 make your work 
brilliant. You know, Proverbs 17.24 talks about this. The discerning sets his faith towards wisdom, but the eyes of the fool are on the ends of the earth. Read that over again. Well, what does that really mean? Saying the eyes of the fool are on the ends of the earth. Meaning, when you are looking beyond what is just in front of you, you lose sight of what needs to be done now. You know, this person who's daydreaming and fantasizing about, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this. Now, the Bible's not against planning, but it's against worrying about the future. Yeah. And getting things on your mind that you shouldn't have, you have no business being on your mind. You know, even for me, like, I'm one of those people, you probably noticed, um, I cannot have a conversation with you with the TV in the background. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm sorry, but if there's something going on around there to distract me, I'm one of those guys. My, my you, you, you guys have probably already seen the Sean face, just just staring at me. Right? Yes. Like, like, there, there's no way. In the same way, it's saying that's a foolish thing to do. Mm -hmm. To get your eyes and your mind or your, your, your even your focus on something that you should not be focused on. Mm -hmm. That is what it means to be foolish. So, you know, you should never... Uh, ask the question, what am I supposed to be doing? Especially here in the ministry. See, the discerning, it says, sets their face towards wisdom. Meaning where eyes are not like on these random different things. That we need to know what our purpose is and focus on it. Mm. So especially in here in the church, we should never have someone say, what should I be doing? What, what am I supposed to be doing? We are all here called to seek and save the lost, period. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right? Anything more that you're trying to do, okay, those things are good. We got to do those things. But... Our main focus is seek and save the lost. Right. If we're just simply focused on that, everything else God will help out. Yeah. You know? The kingdom and on his righteousness, if we're focused on that, the Bible promises us that he's going to help us out with everything. So we read here again that we are not called to multitask. But, point number two, we are called to monotasking. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It just means having one task mm -hmm. in front of you and doing it. So, multitasking is simply choosing to do one thing at a time. And in fact, is that not Jesus' advice that he, he's given us to do? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 through 34, we know this scripture. It says, for the pagans run after all these things. So, the pagans, people who do not believe in God or worship something else, they run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as, that, as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on it, uh, of its own. Mm. You know, it talks about here is like the pagans. They're running after all these things, trying to get their clothes, trying to get all these things that they're worried about. But you, you should not be worrying about that. What he's kind of saying here is like, hey, you believe in God, but you're running around like the pagans. You, you believe in me, but you live as though you don't. Mm. You worry as though you don't. It should have this different effect in your life where you're like, hey, I'm worried about all the same things kind of the, 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 the world can worry about. I understand that, but I don't really relate because I believe in God. Mm. I understand why you're worrying about your car, your payment, or your visa, but I don't really understand because I prayed this morning. Mm. Like, that, that, that's what it's talking about here. Like, hey, but God knows that you need them. You know, when you're worried about or busy worrying about all the wrong things, you don't really get focused on the right things. Yeah. And when you're constantly trying to do many things at once, you are not focused on the kingdom of God. And it always causes you to have more stress than, than, than what you should have. I know I do this a lot of times where I'll say I'm about to do something. You know, I'm like, okay, hey, I'm just about to go do this and everything. And then I go off, and then my mind starts going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then Tegan has to come and poke me. Hey, remember you were doing that thing? You know, every every single time, like, hey, remember you were just writing an email? Oh, yeah, I forgot. You know, even today, like, I think we were supposed to do the visa. And then I got, like, ten different things. I've got to look at the budget. got to look at this. got to look at, hey, do the visa, right? And so I was like, always get back. Just, just focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. And that's what God has called us to do. You know, we look at here, not only this, but it gives us the opportunity to follow Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 through 24. Mm -hmm. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, yeah. since you know that you receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Mm -hmm. So when we actually settle down our lives in multi, uh, excuse me, monotask, then it gives us the ability to work as though we're working for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? That, that, that would be a very difficult conversation 
So let's say that you thought you were working for your boss yeah. today. You thought you were doing it, whether that's for the hospital, you know, selling some roofing things, whatever. And at the end of the day, you're like, okay, hey, I did this for my boss. And Jesus shows up at your door. Hey, let me see the product you worked for me. He'd be like, no, I was working for my company. No, 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 you were working for me. You just didn't realize it. You thought you were working for your boss. Yeah. So, so, so this gives us an opportunity. Like, man, that, that would be a hard conversation to have, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way, when we start to monotask, we start to get the focus is like, I'm doing this for God. Yeah. Let me do it greatly then. So, you know, it's not as though, and what's awesome about this, remember, it's not just realizing and acting as though you're working for God. Read what it says here. It, notice how it does not say, as though you're working for the Lord. It doesn't say as though. It says simply stated in fact, you are working for the Lord. Now start acting like it. Ooh. Right? That's what it's saying. It doesn't say like you're working for the Lord or like getting a simile or anything. It's saying you are working for the Lord. Realize it and realize that you are going to be rewarded by the Lord. So when we try and do too much, we get many things done in mediocrity, but never in excellence. Come on, bro. And so the, the thing is, is... Do try and seek to do one thing at a time and do it well. It wastes so much time when someone has to redo what you quote unquote did because it wasn't excellent the first time. You know, think about how much time you've wasted where you did it half heartedly the first time, you had to go back and redo it. Mm. So, th this call is to do it right the first time. You know, even in, in the ministry, have you ever done like a you didn't do really a good Bible study with somebody, and then maybe they weren't seeking God or really called to seek God the first time, and you have to go back and readdress that conviction. It's the same thing in every little areas of our life, whether that's finances or even life talks that we're supposed to be having. Don't I think it was a cool concept of um, that uh, the Honolulu disciples actually just taught Tegan and I, and I think I really I really related to it. It's just because you're resolved doesn't mean you're repentant. I don't know if that really applies for this moment, but it was something that I really connected to. I was like, that, that's a really cool thing. Even this is like, just because you think it's going okay, but you haven't really checked its excellence, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, if, if, if we haven't repented of that sin or we haven't gone, we're going to have to go and double check it. So just because someone's resolved, even when you're talking to them, if you haven't seen their repentance and deeds, mm -hmm. you're going to have to go double check it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the, the work is done the first time. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. You know, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with very much. So it's talking about every task matters in the eyes of God. Yeah. Each quality of work shows your quality of character. Right? He says, hey, I, I look at the small things that you do in your life in order to kind of uh, determine if I'm going to give you bigger things. That's what God is saying. He's like, the small things you do are showing me your quality of character. So we have to understand this. So it's not um, understanding like some people will come and ask, ask for more. God is here saying, hey, if you want more, earn it. Be promoted. Get it. Earn it yourself. You want to be handed more? Well, you got to start doing better with the little that you've been given. And so this, this, again, puts it back on our hearts. Okay, let's make sure we have excellence in the small tasks that we are doing. So point number three, just practicals of excellence or how to uh, monotask in our lives. Well, one, separate your schedule. Um, schedule each task instead of trying to do them throughout the day when you get time. What I mean by that is instead of just writing a to-do list, pull out your schedule in, in, instead and write when you're going to do it at what time. Yeah. Does that make sense? So it's not just like, I need to do these things. It's saying, okay, at 3.30, I have five minutes, I'm doing this. Yeah. Right? So, so making that you're scheduling a time. And give yourself enough time to get the job done well. Don't just, okay, I can do a little bit here. Like, make sure you get enough time that it's going to be awesome and complete that time. Second thing is submit your to-do list to God. Uh, try to look through your list. Excuse me. Try to look through your list. Try to look through you, list, whatever, okay. Through God's eyes. Oh, try to look through your list through God's eyes and reorder it in terms of priority. So what would God prioritize in your list? Come on. You know, not just what do you want to do or what you're worried about. What, what does God seem as, as important in your list? Um, 
I find that this radically changes the order in which I do things. Yeah. Tasks that weren't even written on my list come up to the forefront, or other tasks fall right off the list. You know, you start to do that, and I'm like, oh, wow, God would prioritize this, or God actually doesn't even think that's important. I don't even need to do that one today, mm -hmm. right? Okay, number three, reduce your distractions. Whether it's Facebook or your smartphone or many other things that can tempt us to spend just a few minutes on it, mm -hmm. right, reduce those things. Um, make sure that they're not just, uh, it, not only do these things waste our time, but it's also spiritually unsatisfying by the end of it. So it just wastes our time and makes us feel like we, we can't catch up into our, into our lives. Um, reduce it in ways, um, reduce it in all ways, and you'll find yourself having so much time to pray to God, read your Bible, or make other calls in your ministry, or just simply to do the things you want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, try not listening to music while you're doing ta tasks, but pray instead. Mm. Uh, so that could, that's a good practical. Some people need music when they're doing tasks. Continue doing that if that helps you. I, I, but just another little practical. Yeah. And if your mind is ca uh, constantly bouncing around and you can't focus on a given task, mm -hmm. so if you're worried about different things and you're just trying to multitask but you can't, um, you know, maybe you have a couple options you can do here. One, finish whatever is on your mind as soon as you can. So if you're thinking about something and you're not really wholeheartedly in one task, stop what you're doing and monotask on the thing you're worrying about. Yeah. Just, just get it over and done with. It will save you time doing that than keep worrying and, and thinking about it and stopping every 10 seconds. So just get it over. Or the second thing, write it down and make sure, again, you schedule when you're going to do it. So it takes off that relief. Like, oh, what are we going to do? Okay, let me just calm down. I'm writing it. I'm doing it here. Okay, let me focus on what I'm doing now. Um, or get someone to help you and share the load with you. If there's something on your heart and you're like, I can't do it right now, just give someone a call. Everybody here would love to help in any small way. Um, so again, there's more little practicals there. Um, now take them if they uh, are, are specifically with you. But if not, I'm not calling you to do more things. My main practical by the end of this is either look through those that practicals that I just gave you or the list that I gave you earlier and just do one. Complete it with all of your heart. Yeah. Whether that's a week of just praying in the morning at night, go with it with all your heart. Mm -hmm. All these practicals are not simply for me to keep pushing the church in different directions. I'm trying to give a lot of different practicals so at least one of you can grab one of them. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, this one uh, pertains to me more than these other ones do. Mm -hmm. right? Not every single one is going to hit for you guys, but I'm hopefully giving you a lot that each individual here can grab at least one and perfect it in their lives. Mm -hmm. So that's just my practical for today, guys. And I know that um, tonight is still building that character, but I think... We still need in our church a, a sense of excellence. Yeah. We're still a small church here, so however we're building the church now is a foundation of years to come. When somebody comes into the church and they see how well we do things, they're going to think, okay, that, that standard is okay then. Mm. You know, that, that standard of work is okay. So we are setting the excellence for many churches to come in all of the islands and everything to come. And I believe once we start going back down to mon uh, monotasking, we can start doing what we're already doing, is working for the Lord in excellence. So thank you guys very much. Yes.